Um, well, I've, uh, I've had my ups and downs. I'm still kicking. I'm trading every day. I'm focused on the market. Um, do you remember the last time we saw each other? I was just curious if you remember. I don't know how many. It must have been 15 years. I think I heard. I think it's 20. You were at my house and we were basically uh, having some food when you said the, the German Shepherd. You know, it's so funny, Joe. I have another one. That that was that one was awesome. That was his name, Prince Awesome O'Brien. This one is Harley, and it's so funny because I bring him to work, and at times he sticks his head in the camera. Man, it's hilarious. <laughs> you know, I you know, two things stand out. Three things actually. Of course, the good company, but your uh, your pool. I remember and the delicious steaks, but the the dog was. I hate to say this, the dog was the feature. I mean, I love that dog you had. No, dog. I know, man. I mean, no, that 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 dog was something else, man. They are, that this is the seventh. So this is the seventh German Shepherd I've had, you know. So I, I've had them since you and I were freshmen at Boston Tech. How's that? Is that sick? I mean, I grew up with one, you know, six, seven, eight years old. Uh, I have a dog now, you know. They're 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 a gift, gift from God to us. Uh, yeah, they, they just make life so much better. Hey, listen to this, man. You're going to love this. That there's so many tigers that are still around like us, okay? One of them in, in the trading room right now is saying hi from, and he remembers you when we, we did the workshop down the Sheridan Sand Key. <laughs> Isn't that wild? I remember that. <laughs> I remember that. It was a good workshop. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the last time we saw each other was not at your house. It was, it was just a certain amount of time after that. Yeah. It was in a, it was in a taxi line. At the uh, Las Vegas airport, we were both doing a Traders Expo show. Okay, and you were you were ahead of me by about fifty people, and I remembered you looked so pressed and 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 you know presentable, and I looked like a rag. And uh, that was that was actually the last time I saw you. We had no time to talk during the show; it was so busy. That's right. No, so were you going back to Thailand then? Oh, you come back to Florida. You, you well, I'm in Florida now. Okay. Uh, I had to evacuate Thailand or I wouldn't have gotten out at all. And okay. I can't get back in there because they're not let, uh, letting anybody back in. I see. Okay. Okay. Wild, man. I'm telling you. And folks, I love if, it over there. You know, being over there in Asia, uh, I get up uh, I get up at noontime yep. and uh, I can see what European markets are doing, what the overnight session's doing. And then I start trading about 8 o'clock and uh, I, go, I go until 3 or 4 in the morning. Uh, depending upon daylight savings time, and it's perfect for me because, you know, I'm uh, I'm alert and awake every night at uh, midnight, twelve, one, two. So sure. if I feel like taking the night off, I can go out to the bars and have a good time. And you know, folks, if you've never got Joe's book, it's the Napoli Levels. It's a phenomenal book. It's one of the first books that I ever got, and. You know, Joe knows the story. I used to sit there, man, between his book and then once I understood that all those pyramids of Fibonacci numbers, man, I mean, for years, I just remember sitting on the floor because I like sitting on the floor going through these all. Um, and, you know, you double repo uh, at this Tiger Network, Joe, I want you to know that you have uh, a lot of folks that uh, not only understand what you do, uh, these double repos, uh, uh, one host in particular, David White, there he has, knows them upside down. He's been teaching a lot of other people because that double repo is something else, man. Uh, and we've got a lot of them, you know, in this marketplace, man, which is pretty wild. Here, Joe, stay right there. We just got a quick break. We're going to, I want you to walk us through. We're talking about market structure and uh, we'll go from there. Okay. Stay right there, folks. Uh, Tom O'Brien, Joe DiNapoli. Uh, you can reach, reach Joe, folks, at Coast Investment. Dow up 64, NASDAQ up 29, S&P's up 7. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Joe DiNapoli, Tom O'Brien, we do appreciate you growling a problem with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 47, NASDAQ is up 19, S&P's are up 6. And, folks, you can reach Joe at Fib nodes.com that's f-i-b-n-o-d-e-s.com so fibnodes.com uh joe what we're gonna do is this we are not gonna do commercials in the next break so we're gonna really get you some time here so you can explain i know you, you're explaining market structure and when we left off with larry you were going from the aspect of uh what you know a daily a weekly and bringing it down to the uh aspects of intraday so um Wherever you'd like to go, let's do it. First, I want to thank you for mentioning the book. What you don't know, Tommy, is that it has been published and translated now into 10 different languages around the world. 
Portuguese and Thai is coming out this year. That's so cool, so Joe. Been very wow. successful. And it just, I got lucky. I got admitted, okay? I got lucky because I'm, I do leading indicators. The only way I think these markets are survivable today yes. is with good leading indicators. I just don't think you can, you can, you can deal with them any other way. And you, so, you were talking about, uh, so uh, <laughs> you have an MACD, uh, what is it, uh, what did you do with it in order to basically right. skew it? All right, um, we go, let's go a little history. Jerry LaPel did yep. the uh, MAC, MACD years ago. Right. All right, this is a long time ago, what, 30 years ago. Yeah. And um, what happened was that uh, another guy, um, um, who's a guy that invented the... Uh, George Lane, right. Okay. He, no, 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 no. Jake Bernstein, certain numbers to the MACD, Gerald DePale's MACD. Now, these certain numbers are the, are the numbers that you need to use, and you need to have the right equation to get the right MACD. So, you know, it's not like any MACD. Yes. You've got to get the right MACD. Right. Now, okay, well, let's assume you've got Jake's numbers, and you've got the right formula for the MACD. Okay. Those two things together. Yep. Now what you do is you do some magic of math, which I'm not terribly good at, but what other people have done for me. And what they did was they made this a predictive thing where you, you get the MACD, predict, the MACD, which used to be on the bottom of a chart, two squiggly lines. Now it's a single line, and it actually is out in front of market action so that when you get across of that particular line, then it is either a buy or a sell signal based on on a trend. It's in other words, it's a very sophisticated trend indicator. Yes. Now it so happens that the algos are on this thing. Okay. So when you penetrate it, you're not only getting the <clears throat> you, you're not only getting uh, you know an indication of a trend move, but <laughs> you know the algos go okay, buy 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 or sell 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 sell. Now, and Joe, are they, how these guys come into the market? They just come in in droves. Are they displacing it forward? Is that what they're doing? Well, I don't know how they're doing it. Okay. Uh, how we do it is that we we have this MACD, this uh, five or six different chart uh, charting packages where our indicators are on those things. Yeah. One of them is CFG. And um, it is a single line, wavy line that's on a chart. When you get a penetration of this, it not only shows you a trend change, but it shows you where the algos are going to move. If you don't know where the algos are entering and exiting the market these days, and you're trying to trade, particularly intraday, you can lose everything. You can lose all your money. It's, it's that simple. Uh, in the previous section, I, uh, I uh, was talking to Larry about some of the games that the large traders play. Yes. Where they, where they set loose predatory algorithms and they, they push the market down through this MACD predictor, creating cells so that they can flatten a short position if they believe they're wrong. Sure. I mean, this is the kind of thing that's going on all the time in the markets. And unless people have an idea of what's happening, they don't understand the market movement. And um, if you don't if you don't understand what's going on in these markets, uh, I don't think you have much of a chance of survival. These markets are absolutely brutal. You know, for a guy like you or me or Larry, we you know the volatility is a good thing, but excess volatility is not a good thing for I'd say ninety five percent of the people. Yeah, there's no yeah. doubt. So let me ask you something: when you when you when you take your your expansion contraction Fibonacci with the leading indicators. Are you looking for the leading indicator first? Or are you looking for the expansion contraction first? Well, simultaneously. Right. Okay. You know, okay. with yeah. leading indicator Fibonacci work, okay, you get buys and you get sells. Yes. Right? You get sell points, you get buy points. Now the trick is, do you want to be a buyer or do you want to be a seller? Because you can be you can do either. Right. So then what you do is you look to the patterns like um, double repo you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, Railroad track and there's right. four others. Uh, bread and butter is a real good one. Okay, yep. so you look to those, and that gives you the context for the trade. Alternatively, you can look at the MACD predictor. Let's say it's on a thirty or a sixty. Yes, you're above. You're above that. That indicates an uptrend. And so, what you want to do is buy retracements. If you're below that, that indicates a downtrend. That, therefore, you want to sell. You want to sell out expansion. Oh, cool! I got it. Okay. Okay. Cool. So, yep. So, you know, it, you got to use the leading indicator, but you got to use it right. You know, you can't just say, okay, it's a leading indicator. No, that explained a lot. No, I'm with you. That's cool, man. Okay, so because 
that you, you, that's given you what we predict is the right side of the market, and then you're going to use the FIB number to get you the expansion contraction off of that, whether it's coming, you're buying or selling, right? Exactly yeah. correct. Right. Now, um, what, what happens is that for those people that are listening, you know, I don't use all Fibonacci numbers. I've distilled it down to certain certain numbers, which, uh, you know, I refer to as, as the Napoli level. Right. Here things like confluence, et cetera. That's right. And, and these are these are more high probability places to act in the market. And um, if you want to drop your time frame to even a five or one minute chart, there's plenty of opportunities to trade. You just gotta have some pretty good software to you know to keep up with keep up with the market. And you know what what I'd like to do, you know, I, I mentioned all this horror excess volatility and uh, market structure which is uh, in the previous segment market structure which is which has just been just hollowed out the market and made the market incredibly difficult to trade but there's an answer to this to even for longer term traders and i would like to mention that Let's do because it. i think yeah. benefits your, your readers might uh, listeners might really benefit from that so what you can do tom is is you can take i don't care if it's microsoft i don't care if it's if it's the fangs i don't care what it is you can do these calculations and get deep retracements in and deep expansions. Yes. And when you get these numbers, even if you're against the trend, these numbers are going to create bounces and movements in the opposite direction. So what you can do, well, let's just say, uh, where is Apple trading t today? Around 114, 115, something like that? I think it's running into, uh, yeah, 122 maybe. I all right, so I know we just had a rally the last exactly couple of days. right. I was I was in that sucker at 105, yeah. right on its Napoli level. But anyway, that's not the point. The point is, you can do calculations. Now, let's say these calculations say that Apple is a buy at 103 and it's a sell at uh, 138. Yes, those, those numbers those numbers are just off the top of my head. No, I'm with you. Yeah, I'm not looking at my charting software. All right, so you've got a buy number and you've got a sell number. What you do is you stick those numbers in the market or better orders. And you leave them there. Now, right now, I have got um, in one of my large accounts, I have got about 18 orders. Now, I'm, normally, it's around 35 orders. Okay. And these orders have buys and sells in them. Now, when you look at the overnight section, the session of the markets, and you see that there's a bid and an offer in the overnight uh, market, a lot of times on the 30 or 35 stocks that I trade, that's me. You look there, that's DiNapoli trying to buy or DiNapoli trying to sell. Those, yes. are, my, those are my orders. Right. And uh, I've been asked, I said, Joe, how do you have the confidence to just put an order in there? I mean, aren't you, aren't you afraid? I'm not afraid at all. These are numbers that are very solid, um, high time frame level numbers. And, you know, I get up in the morning and I come in, I'll get no fills. Okay, it didn't cost me anything. Then I come in in the morning and I got one or two fills. And generally, I'm in a significant profit. Because it hits the number. I'm not the only one that's doing these numbers. There are some humongous traders that are looking at these numbers. Uh, they may do it a little bit differently. So it hits the numbers. Let's say it's Apple 103. Sure. There's a little bit of support down there. I'm buying, and maybe a couple of other people are buying, and yep. it pushes the number up to, let's say, 106 or 105 or 104. And then what that does is it clicks off on a, on a 20 minute chart, overnight chart, it clicks off the MACD predictor to the upside. Now the elbows step in. Okay, so now we're up to 106 or 108. So right. if I come in in the morning, I'm filled at 103. Uh, the market's at 106. If I wish to, I can put a stop below the 103, basically a break-even trade, and then I can have a profit. I can calculate a profit objective. This is a really good way for a guy who's working stiff, who's going to work, and he can't sit there and monitor the market, to be able to get orders and buy and sell stuff. It, it works in gold. It, it'll even even work on, on the S and folks, folks, let me tell you something. It works on everything. And and Joe, they, they, they there's no doubt, okay? So picture something for a second, folks, because what Joe's talking about, right, um, is so cool because in the marketplace, what I've found is this, Joe, right, is that your confluence levels are the only things that are telling you, it doesn't mean that they have to go there. But what we're talking about, folks, is that, you know, you're going to get pullbacks Period. I mean, the, 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 at some point. So this is an advanced number 
that you know what the number is. That's what I love about those, Joe, is that you know what the number is before the fact. And as you said, hey, listen, man, sometimes you get them, sometimes you don't get them. But when you do get them, more than likely, at the very beginning of that, you are going to get that pop. I mean, and you know what I've seen, Joe, which is really cool, you know, with the volatility sometimes is vicious, there's no doubt. But what has happened is that most of these numbers hit much faster, uh, for sure, when we get that volatility. Do you know what I'm saying? Well, that's why that's why this stuff, that's why the book has been published in all these different languages, sure. because it gives a, a person a, a, a way to actually participate in a market that should not exist. Larry, did, uh, 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 Tommy, this, this thing, we shouldn't have markets like this. This is bad for the country. It's bad for our economy. It's good for you. It's good for me. It's good for Larry. It's but what, you, what you're really country. saying is that the computers are making all the money, right? I agree. There's no, there's no doubt. Well, the computers, yeah. Not only are they making all the money, they're making the market unstable. Yeah. And this is a this market is an equity raising function. You know, it's not for you and I to play games and, and buy houses. It's yeah. I mean, it's not the purpose of equity markets. We're talking about jobs. We're talking about, you know, we're talking about sure. America here. The economy. Right? Yeah. No, no, and, no, and, doubt. no and, doubt. No doubt. No doubt. And so a few people... Uh, including the exchanges, can make a ton of money. We've let this thing get out of hand, completely right. out of hand, and, and one day it's going to be stopped. <clears throat> we have had these V bottoms now occurring constantly since 2009. Yes, you know they used to occur once or twice a year. Now they're right. occurring a few months, and and the computers are responsible for it. So this is we can make our money, but it's it's just too hard on other people and, and and I wish that we could do something about it and as I said in the previous section, Lee Cooperman has been out front, and you know he's yes. got billions and uh if he can't do anything about it, Joe Napoli's not going to be able to do anything about it, but it's nice to have the microphone. I thank you so much you know for a lot letting me expose this because you know it at least alerts people to where the problems lie right. No, no doubt. No doubt. And, you know, folks, when when I said I, I forgot, let's see. So your, your website, folks, it I mean, uh, Joe, it's new dot fibnodes dot com. Right. Is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah. That's people will find me. Um, Fib trader dot com. They will the find easiest yeah. way. It gets it gets forwarded to my website. Uh, F I B T R A D E R dot com. But uh, and I appreciate you mentioning it, but that's not really why I came on here, Tommy. Oh, I know uh, that. No, I know that. But guess what? You know, I, I want people to get educated. So, you know, bottom line. That's I do, too. Yeah. I really do. I want people to understand what's going on. And and when the last segment ended, I was talking about China and I was talking about the impact of China. Yes. And the elections. And um, so let's uh, do that. We, got, we have eight that. minutes. We have eight minutes left, Joe. All right. Okay, so I was trying to impress on people what a competitive challenge China is. I've been doing presentations over there for 15 years. Yes. And um, uh, these people, they're a dead sharp. Oh, you know, yeah. It's not about whether they're cheating or not. It's, it's about just straight competition and the efficiency of their uh, governmental structure, far more efficient than ours. And for right up until about 2016, every single time I gave a presentation over there to uh, Tommy, I said, I looked at the facts and just told the truth. And I said, look, this is your century. This is what's happening. And then um, and I, I just thought the supremacy of China was inevitable. I never thought that it was it was going to be challenged. And um, I have a, had a very significant position in China, a long position. And I took it out on ASHR, which is a uh, an ETF of the uh, of be like the blue chip companies in uh, in China. Okay. And, uh, so I had a very big position in that thing, and uh, it wasn't acting real well. But it but it I had this position, the long term position. You know, I had it for many years, and then uh, you know Donald Trump happened, and when that happened, you know, I started wondering whether whether there was actually a real challenge, real challenge to China. And uh, I stopped, and after I saw, you know, uh, this stuff about uh, the trade war, et cetera, et cetera, whether you agree with it or not, you know, it, it has definitely slowed down the uh, progression of China, which I thought was inevitable, which, but which I believe is not necessarily any longer. Now, relative to the uh, elections, um, if 
if uh, former Vice, Vice President Biden gets in, I am going to be so long China that, I mean, I am going to be all over that thing. I am going to go. I have no position now. I'm completely flat. But I'm going to do everything I can to get a long position on at the right price. And ASHR, which uh, hit 36 and a half roughly yesterday. Yes. Um, uh, I expect that thing to go back up to 55, where it was in 2008. I was in China on 2008. We we're at a major XOP expansion in that thing, Fibonacci 1.618 expansion. And when we were up there, I was in China and I called for a top. We went from 55 down to the 20s. <laughs> and then now we've climbed back up to uh, 36. I get out of my position at 35.20, right around that area. And um, I, I do not, if, if, if Donald Trump gets back in, I do not want a long position on China. I will go short. No question about it. Donald Trump is vindictive. He will go after China. He will go after them in a big way. And uh, uh, so the most obvious play I have for the election, I have others, but the most obvious play I have for the election is uh, um, Biden win long China, a Trump win short China. Uh, that's, that's the key. Um, Joe, can, isn't it isn't it amazing how fast they can build a building over there? Oh, you oh, are you kidding? No, no, I mean, no listen, I, I I'm you know, like this whole Trump thing and the Tafts and all that. I import a lot of stuff from China. I'm building a lot of houses down here. So uh, this 26 percent, you know, when they're saying that China pays for it, we're the ones paying twenty six thousand for every hundred thousand that's coming in. So. I, I've never seen building like that in my life, man. If, if you've never seen it, folks, I mean, it's phenomenal, man. It's like it's like crazy. <laughs> I was just staying in uh, Shangri-La, right there in um, in uh, Shanghai, right on the beautiful, beautiful river. Yeah, a few people haven't been to China. You, oh my God, that country is just. They, with our money, they have built an infrastructure. You know, they're not gonna they're not gonna stop with eating our lunch. They're going to eat our breakfast, and when they got our breakfast, they're coming after dinner. <clears throat> people, people got to travel. They don't realize. Yeah, huh? there's, there's no doubt. There's they, no doubt. They don't realize. Yeah. Now we talk about building. I'm sitting in the, <clears throat> you know, in the top floor, Shangri La, and these folks are putting up a building down below me, and they are working 24 seven. They never stop, and I never mm. saw a building go up so fast. I know. It is unbelievable. It they is. They don't have to worry about permits. They don't have to worry about any of this stuff. Right. They just when they build, and mm. it's done. It's it, un it unbelievable. Is. Yeah. It really is, man. All right so, now. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. No, I, I want to talk about some obvious things from the election and we can talk about some of the things that aren't so obvious if you like yeah absolutely now, you're you're far more knowledgeable about playing gold than uh, than i am okay you i yep. know this is baby you've been fooling with it for years i have no idea what your position is yep we haven't talked about this which makes it much better for a radio show sure uh so i want to tell you what i think about gold hey d one second hey al just don't don't put the next commercials on either okay Al, you hear me? Okay, good. Go ahead, Joe. Sorry. All right. So, um, Donald Trump is spending money. You know, like Reagan said, you know, we don't want to, we don't want to make a drunken sailor look bad. But Donald Trump is spending money. You know, like six drunken sailors. Unbelievable. What we're doing to the balance sheet of the Federal Reserve, creating money, is absolutely unbelievable. Right? It yeah. is just beyond. Beyond any anything you can imagine. So, all right. So, what's that? That's bullish for gold. I am so bullish gold. I, I mean, I am not a gold trader. Right. I have not had long term positions in gold since the eighties. Right. I mean, you know, well, I, I, I not, haven't had them. Right. But now, with with the way the way Trump is is printing money and his attitude toward debt, then then I have got to think on a fundamental. Okay, now this is important on a fundamental basis. I gotta believe gold is going through the roof. Now let's talk about uh, former Vice President uh, Biden. He's even more so. So to Trump is absolutely insane with the amount of money that, that is going out and times two with 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 Biden. 
I mean, the money that, that the, the Democrats are going to print if they get into office, and again, I'm not being critical of anybody, lots of reasons to vote for a president. I'm talking economics. I'm talking markets. So I want to be, I want to be super long gold, and I want to be even longer if Biden gets in. Yeah, so, you know it's gonna, you know it's gonna be interesting. So the, there's, no, there's no doubt. We went from like, if we take a look at, uh, like when long-term capital went south, folks. Okay, which is a monster deal. Joe was around. We were all around at that point. That was only about four billion dollars. Billion. Think about that. We, we don't even four billion dollars. That's like pocket change to these companies now. So now we're into the trillions. And what's intriguing, Joe, is that everything is out the window, man, because the bottom line is that we, we're into the trillions. And I'm trying to figure out right now, I'm saying to myself, well, if they don't get a stimulus package going now, I suspect the Republicans are going to turn around and, and, you know, if Biden gets in and say, well, they're conservative again. <laughs> so it's going to be wild watching it, right? You know, like, you know, as to how the bread's going to go in. But I, I think what you're saying in the larger context, which I believe, Everything has changed, man. I mean, there's no reason that the Fed is not going to keep pumping money in for every time anything happens in the economy going forward. Yeah, and it's it's extremely dangerous. Now, let's talk about if the Democrats get in and they also win the Senate. I mean, just forget about it. You know, we're we're going down the road of Zimbabwe. Yeah, you better have some. You better I mean, have this some is gold. Oh, this right. is serious stuff. Right. You know, right. if people if people vote that way, what they're going to get is they're going to they're going to end up with the potential of us losing um, uh, currency status, world currency status. And and I mean, you know, you just cannot print money into oblivion. It's impossible. So if we start down that road in, in six months or a year or two years, we lure, res lose reserve currency status. Um, America will never be the same again. You know, you're going to think that fifteen dollars for a half a gallon of milk is a buy, and it's going to it's going to decimate the poor. And they're and the way they're going to solve the problem is to print more money, and to print more money, it's going to make the problem worse, and it's going to be absolute chaos. I I would expect serious rioting. What more than we have now? So I mean, uh, this is serious stuff. But speaking economically, okay, let's get back to gold. Now, that's, that is a fundamental consideration. Let's talk about the technical consideration. Right now, uh, chart seven, I sent Larry last night. Okay. Chart seven on gold. We have a weekly sell on the MACD predictor. Yeah. In other words, the trend is down. Um, gold isn't acting right. Now, the listeners go, well, what the hell does that mean, Joe? For Christ's sakes, can you define not acting right? Yeah, well, not acting right is like it should go up. There's a buy signal because uh, there are daily buy signals and there is also Fibonacci support levels. And when you get to those levels, you should see upward movement. You should be you should see you should see upward momentum, upward movement. You should see this market responding to what you and I are discussing right now. OK, the fact that that we could see gold at much higher levels. It ain't happening. It's not happening. Now, the last time. I saw this. Uh, do you know a company called Luck and Coffee? I do. <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> I hear the smiles. All right. So, so that your listeners understand that that we professionals, yeah. you know, we're not always making money. Yeah. So Luck and Coffee is uh, the Chinese love coffee. You think they love tea? Well, they love coffee. Yeah. And Luck and Coffee came out and uh, it was an I IPO, and I think it came out at seventeen. Traded up to around 45, bounced around, perfectly bounced around Fibonacci numbers from roughly 20 to 35. I made a ton of money in this thing, right? And uh, I mean, I, I just was doing great. And um, it came down to a support level at about 25, 26. I bought a bunch of it and I got busy and wasn't watching it too much. But out of the left corner of my eye, this thing was not acting well. In other words, it wasn't moving up when the market went up. It was just sort of sitting there, right? Yes. And I'm going, what the hell's wrong with this? You know, normally I've got thousands and thousands of dollars of profit in this thing as soon as I enter. And I wasn't getting the profit. So I was busy and I was looking elsewhere. And the next thing I know, <laughs> they stopped trading in the mother. Now, you couldn't sell it for anything. Right. I'm going, what the hell happened? Okay, so it was a fraud. Not uncommon in China. Right. So 
what happened was they stopped trading this sucker, and I and I, you know I'm, I've got a pot full of shares, and um, there's no there's no out. There's just no out. And I'm down I'm down six figures. I won't tell you whether it was mid or high, but I'm down six figures on this thing. And um, how did I? What, what was my suspicion? Why am I? How did I bring it up? Because luck and coffee was not trading well. Um, All right. If if your readers uh, have the time, they should definitely read Reminiscences of a Stock Trader. Yeah. And uh, he talks about tape reading, and I'm a pretty good tape reader. And basically, tape re- reading is just a matter of how does the market react to uh, uh, how does a stock react should it, when it goes up, when it should go up, does it go up, or when it should go down, does it go down? All right. So um, what I'm saying, I'm, I don't think gold is going <laughs> to stop trading in gold. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that price action in gold is not good, even though the fundamentals look great. So in my own portfolio, first time in probably 20 years, I had a very large position in gold. I got up to break even last Friday, and I got out of the 55% of it. And why did I get out of it? Well, because it wasn't acting well. And I intend to enter um, as soon as I get down to uh, a level where I believe, uh, you know, this thing will support. And in, ch- in chart number seven, which I sent Larry last night, I think you're going to put it on your website. I see pretty good support at around uh, 1801 to 1829. I hope that's the futures. Um, anyway, uh, I think it is the futures. Yes. But that's, that's where support is. And there's another terrific amount of support down around the, just above 1700. Uh, Fibonacci support. Uh, I'm not saying the markets will get there. All I'm saying is that that's where I want to enter. And the reason that I get rid of half my position is because based on, on tape reading or based on um, what we call dynamic pressure, um, this thing's just not acting right. And I don't know why it's not acting right. And uh, so that's why I eliminated a, a part of my position. Yeah, you know, the uh, one of the things that I actually love about gold is that the it never seems to act right, Joe. <laughs> it's, really? Yeah, it's pretty funny how this works, man. They because they they can move it around so quick, uh, and so I, I basically combine that with the dollar and with the the ten year note when I when I'm looking at that. So it, it's it's intriguing because I'm looking like if it, it, you know the expansion on gold, it looks to me like twenty seven hundred is really game. So we'll see where this shakes out. But, you know, I I agree with you that, you know, fundamentally it should go there. And I also uh, there's no doubt that it's like, okay, why hasn't it busted forward? But, uh, you know, it's a small market, too. That's the real bottom line. I mean, you saw like J.P. Morgan's got fined a million times, not a million thousand times for basically, you know, trying to control the market. You know, Citigroup has, you know, so. But I think longer basis, man, it's right, right what we're talking about is like, who would ever think that we're in the, the time of uh, the age that, you know, three trillion to put in the marketplace, going to put another two trillion more. And just as I said, we, can you believe what, you know, when you go back to long term capital, the world was going to end and that was only over four billion dollars, you know. <laughs> is that weird? <laughs> you know, it, you know, it's funny you mentioned J.P. Morgan. Uh, I got some nice settlement checks from them. <laughs> oh, that's a beautiful thing. <laughs> totally. You know, talk about, you know, people need to understand if they don't think this market's manipulated, you better start thinking again. I've been involved in this 50 years. You know, markets are manipulated. That's You know, I I go to these presentations and whether it's a foreign currency markets or uh, or other large markets, I have people come up to me. Oh, it's a it's a three trillion dollar market. Nobody can manipulate that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what you think. Right. Markets are manipulated. Newsflash. Get that through your head. When you get that through your head and you get some leading indicators, you're going to start making money. Um, so J.P. Morgan, I got a nice settlement check from them. I forget what what it was about, but it was a it was a stock that they were playing games with. Um, my first objective for gold um, is twenty one ninety four. It's right on that chart I gave you. Yep. Okay. But actually, you know, if this thing goes the way it's likely to go, I, I mean, the sky's the limit. You know. Uh, it, Three, four, five thousand on gold. I don't think that's unreasonable at all. But I've got a question for you, uh, Tommy. Uh, I have had some of my experts. Uh, you know, there are certain Denapoli experts out there that teach the methods, etc. Yes. 
And they have said that because of cryptocurrencies, that uh, gold has lost its origin, its status uh, that, that it had in previous years. What do you think about that? Any comment on that? Yeah, I don't I don't buy that because I don't buy the deal. So many people have lost so much money, man, you know, whether through just their own losing their clip in crypto in general, that to me, um, you know, you and I would be going into Las Vegas and going on uh, the roulette table, which we wouldn't do outside of entertainment. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? So it's, right, right, right. It, it really gold is gold, man. And, yeah, and, the, you know, the bottom line is that 10 tons of dirt, picture a good gold mine, folks, a good gold mine is 10 tons of ore make one ounce of gold. OK, that's pretty amazing. Hey, Joe, well, this was absolutely awesome. Uh, folks, you can check out Joe at new.fibnodes.com and uh, check out his website, Denapoli Levels, an outstanding book. Uh, Joe, this is awesome, man. I'm going to, well, I know uh, my producer right now has, has your number for sure. We're going to get you on again. We'll have some fun, man. I really appreciate the education. Well, we've had fun already, Tommy. It was great to talk to you and Larry again. You guys are, totally. you guys are good people. Okay, man. Have a great one. Have a safe one.